Today is April 19th, 2022, and welcome to the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. Um, we are here celebrating, as always, every day, Black history. And so we're going to begin this morning rooted in Black history. We'll be joined by Dr. Carl Mack this morning, Georgia Fort. The entire team is coming through. Good morning to everyone on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, wherever you are streaming from. Good morning to you where you are. Leave a comment in the comment section. Be sure to hit the share, like, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Good morning to our partners at Act TV, where they encourage you to do more than watch. They encourage you to act. I want to begin this morning with our moment in Black history brought to us by Dr. Carl Max, Black Heritage Days 4. If you don't have it already, you should most certainly have it. Dr. Mack, good morning to you. I have it in my hand and I see you have it in your background. How goes the day, sir? My brother, I am a warrior right now. I am uh, doing a tremendous amount of research uh, for a couple of, of, of other Black History calendars, an all women's calendar, and then now I'm doing an all sports calendar. So, Ben, I I'm not getting a whole lot of sleep. Not I, I, it sounds like you didn't sleep at all this tonight, last night. And Dr. Mac, I pr I'm pretty sure that's accurate because every time I talk to you, you are putting in 24 and 48 hour shifts, putting together these sec these what number five and number six of Black Heritage Heritage Days, correct? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Um, oh, really? You know, last night, Ben, I, and I, I'll just give you just just a little on, on one of the stories. So last night, uh, I'm looking up Don Barksdale. And for those who may not know, man, Don Barksdale was the first black to play at UCLA. He was the first black to be named an All-American. Um, he was the first black to play on the U.S. Olympic team. He was the first black to be an All-Star. That's who Don Barksdale is. But on top of that, this guy was a tremendous uh, businessman, all of these things. But when he was in high school, he got cut three consecutive years by, by the basketball coach. And the reason that they gave is that the basketball coach said that he didn't, he never wanted more than one player, black player on his team. But no matter where I went, I could not find who this black coach was. And he went to mm. Berkeley High School. I couldn't find it. I was scouring, scouring the internet. So finally, I somehow find the Berkeley High School yearbook. And the most beautiful thing about the folks in California is that they had every yearbook digitally. And I went through every yearbook and I found exactly who this guy is. Oh, wow. I put, it, I put his name right there. I mean, I, I almost centered the story. I started the story with him by telling you exactly who he is. Um, and I'm trying to remember his name right now just because. <laughs> well, Dr. Mack, I can listen, listen, you you look like you have been through a war and these events don't these books, these calendars, they don't happen without great effort and great commitment and just a massive amount of research. Um, I only know a fraction of it from what you tell me when we ever, whenever we get a chance to talk. Uh, but I want the people to get a sample of the type of research. This is from Black Heritage Days 4, um, and this is our moment in Black history. So, hey, Google, what happened today in Black history? Hey, Google, what happened on this day in Black history? April 19th, 1775. The Battle of Lexington April began, 19th, marking 19th. the first major fighting to take place in the American Revolution. This battle is also easily remembered because of the famous Minutemen, Massachusetts soldiers who were to be ready for battle within a minute's notice. Among those Minutemen was a black man named Lemuel Haynes. After the war, he went on to become the first black minister of a church with the white congregation. Adapted from Black Heritage Day calendar by author, lecturer and civil rights activist, Dr. Carl Mack. Dr. Mack, that last part really, uh, I did, I mean, a lot of black history that I don't know, but I did not know that he, after the war, became the first black minister of a white congregation. That's a pretty um, daunting task, even in 2022, but let alone back then. Um, tell us just one, a, a couple more thoughts about this particular entry. Well, see, one of the things that, that Google didn't tell you is that he was born, you know, obviously you look at him and you're thinking, is he a black man? Well, he was born in mixed heritage, so they were mixing it up for as long as man has been on this planet, they've been mixing it up. And so um, his father was 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 uh, black, his mother was white. And so when he died, he was raised by this man of the cloth. So he grew up in the church if you will. And so that's why it was no surprise that uh, after it all ended, he was the first African-American to lead an all-white congregation. Mm. 
he was one of the famed minute men. And you got to remember, there, there were thousands and thousands of black folks that fought for the war that established America, the American Revolution. So that's why we say, even though America is not this more perfect union, we've shed too much blood in every aspect right. of it to give it up. So for those Absolutely. who ain't right, we are going to get you right. Um, and, and this is just part of our history. So absolutely. Uh, the, the way I put it, Dr. Mack, is that this is our home, black people, America, the United States of America, is black people home. We like you said, we've been fighting in every war since the founding of this country. Uh, my family, I could trace it back about seven generations here, of uh, blood and bones buried in the deepest of South of, of America, the United States of America. And Dr. Mack, I agree with you 100 percent. We put too much into this country just to turn it over, um, especially to people who want to overthrow the government. Um, there's new information coming out of Washington, D.C. as it pertains to January 6th. There are leaked text messages from January 6th. Um, and in addition to this, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is a first time congressperson from Georgia, is facing a lawsuit. I want to give you just a little bit of the information. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, a federal judge, is indicted or indicated rather that an attempt to stop the far right Republican congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene from running for reelection will be allowed to proceed. A challenge from a group of Georgia voters say that Greene should be disqualified underneath the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution because. Because she supported insurrectionists who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. And now I want to play this clip from um, Jason Johnson of MSNBC, where he's discussing the newly obtained text messages between Senator Mike Lee and Representative Chip Roy to Mark Meadows, who was the former chief of staff for Donald Trump, as it pertains to January 6th. Let's listen to Jason Johnson's breakdown of it. Seeing just how deep the plan to steal the election of 2020 was. Newly revealed text messages obtained by CNN show Senator Mike Lee and Congressman Chip Roy going right to Mark Meadows in full support of those false claims of fraud being pushed by Trump and the MAGA team. NBC News has not reviewed these text messages. Senator Lee telling Meadows, quote, exhaust every legal and constitutional remedy at your disposal. Congressman Roy saying, quote, we need ammo. We need fraud examples. We need it this weekend. Those attitudes didn't last long. These Republicans grew skeptical and weary of these bogus claims once no evidence could be provided. And there was zero evidence. These newly revealed texts show the lawmakers expressing concern over the plan to overthrow the election by November. Senator Lee writing to Meadows, quote, if you want senators to object, we need a strong evidentiary argument, i.e., you need more people. Trump didn't have that because his claims about election fraud were false. His team continued to press forward with the alternative electors plot. Senator Lee on January 3rd warning Meadows, quote, this will end badly for the president unless we have the Constitution on our side. And unless these states submit new slates of Trump electors pursuant to state law, we do not. Even noting, quote, I have grave concerns with the way my friend Ted is going about this effort. Remember, Ted Cruz objected to the electoral count, but Lee voted to certify the results in favor of Biden. So did Congressman Roy, who told Meadows on January 6th, quote, this is an S word show. We know what he was saying. Mm. Fix this now. Senator Lee's spokesperson mm. telling CNN he has been, quote, fully transparent and Meadows has not responded. Dr. Mack, there's a lot of information there, but it's definitely clear that they knew President Trump, Mark Meadows and the Republican Party knew that what was happening on January 6th was not only fraudulent, but against the Constitution. What are your thoughts? And you, we are absolutely seeing a prime example that a lie goes a lie unchallenged becomes the truth. And you're also seeing an example of what what negative 45 has always told you. I can tell you anything and American people will believe it. But now yeah. what we're basically seeing is you we are all watching democracy be on trial right now. That's so right. when you start talking about Marjorie Taylor or anybody else, I mean, think, you know, for those who of, of, of for those of us who want to think that this was just some random act by a mm. few bad actors. Again, think about this. You got the president of the United States. You got somehow you got a Supreme Court justice <laughs> kind of linked to all this with his That's wife. Right. 
That's right. This thing is as planned as it can get. And when they say to you, look, we need some better evidence because we know that although he has said the election was stolen, good Lord, come on, man, come up with something because we don't mm. have it. But this is what we need to try to make this look right. So, so I don't care how you cut this. This is democracy on trial. That's and right. if you allow, if it, it and if, you know, the reason why you fight so hard to protect the validity of the Constitution, because what Trump already did, oh, I'm sorry, what Negative 45 already did <laughs> on, on January 6th was he, for the first time, interrupted a peaceful transfer of power. This is what America prides itself on, is that we can have our disagreements. We can go toe to toe, be as 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 argumentative as we want to each other. But our respect for, for, for democracy will allow a peaceful transfer of power. And That's negative right. 45 put all that on display. He challenged every bit of that. And today, this is exactly what they're doing. So if you allow somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene or anybody else that had any part to do with January 6th, you have now given, you, you, you put a crack in this mm. so-called constitution. And once That's you right. crack it, amen, once you crack it, that crack cannot be sealed again. It, it absolutely right. cannot be sealed again. And, and, and if they want to go through history and, and look at how to deal with this thing, see, most of us think that John Wilk Booth was acting alone when he shot President mm. No, fam. There was a whole group of folks that was involved in the in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. And not only did they go after Lincoln, they went after damn near everybody in Lincoln's cabinet. So we need to take a page from that book. Because when they found John with Boot, when they found him out of Dr. Mudd's house, right here in Maryland, when they found him, they wasted no time gathering up mm. him and all the other conspirators and dealing with them as though they respected that constitution. Mm. Mm. You know, Dr. Mack, I guess it's, it should be obvious to anyone who knows history or knows how assassinations happen. that obviously not one person involved, yet I had never taken the time to consider that particular fact. Uh, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention this morning. I want to shift good uh, gears to yet another traitor, another John Wilkes Booth. Well, she's not there. I, I, I won't give her that, but I will give her um, the title of a traitor. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, she is going to have to testify. And Dr. Mack, she can't quite believe it. Um, the challenge from a group of Georgia voters says that Greene should be disqualified under the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution because she supported insurrectionists who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Um, I want to take a listen to this clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene on Tucker Carlson discussing the fact that she might actually have to be held accountable. But I have to protect myself. I have to go to court on Friday and actually be questioned about something I've never been charged with and something I was completely against. And so this is how far it's going. These leftists, these progressives who would rather want, they'd rather have the judge or bureaucrats making decisions instead of voters. They want to hand that over to them and not let the people in my district to ha even have the right to vote for me. But no, the Republican Party. And she can't believe she she simply cannot. Uh, Dr. Mack, why, why do these why do these people really believe that they are above accountability? Because I look at her eyes and I listen to the exasperation in her voice. She's flabbergasted. Like, how does a white woman who's a conservative have to be held accountable in the United States? Yeah, but I'm also tell you this. If you listen to her voice, you'll also hear some fear, some concern in that voice as well, because normally she's a you know, she's far more arrogant about that. But see, mm. this is an example of of. You know this this right wing is a uh, right wing uh, guy, David Jones. Same same thing. Mm. The, mm. David Jones comes out and he says that Sandy Hook's a hoax. Oh, Alex, so, Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. Alex Jones throws everything out there that 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 it's just a hoax, and now don't feel like he needs to be held accountable. See, this mm. is a called accountability. And you have to trust and believe if you are going to protect any document in this country, you better protect the Constitution. That's right. And this That's right. group of Eden Heffer to be a part of all of this and now think that she does not have to be held accountable. Well, see, <laughs> you're right. You can't put it no better. That's white privilege at its best from a Karen. Right. 
Bro. Know, how, <laughs> dare you, how dare you think that I am going to be held accountable? But yeah. in situation, everybody who has been a part of this thing, this is why when, when this goes when, when this goes down, and it's got to be deep, uh, Ben, because those folks at the time, when was the last time you heard anything from Rudy Gi- Giuliani? When was the last time mm. you heard anything from him? Nah, see, uh, not since the die incident, but yeah. <laughs> and, and see, right now, Rudy knows he's hanging in the wind. All of them know that Trump is not going to turn his back on all of them. That's right. This, this woman, you, I can hear the concern in her voice. Mm-hmm. And, and look, we, we need to allow this thing to play out. But, but again, trust and believe we're absolutely going to turn this into a soup sandwich if we allow mm. these people to continue on. It's uh, it's it's uh, funny that you brought up Alex Jones, because um, just yesterday, Alex Jones and Infowars and several mm. companies associated with them all filed for bankruptcy amid the Sandy Hook lawsuits. Uh, CBS News is reporting that several companies owned by that far right wing radio host, Alex Jones, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The news comes amid several high-profile defamation lawsuits brought against uh, the radio host. Chapter, uh, for those who aren't familiar, Chapter 11 bankruptcy allows businesses to continue operating while they prepare a turnaround plan by pausing any pending civil litigation. So this is giving him a level of protection so that they can do whatever maneuvering they have to do. Uh, But according to court documents, the companies that filed for bankruptcy were InfoWars, in four wars, health and prison planet TV. They have a TV station in the prisons. I didn't know that. Um, and the filing in, in the filing rather Infowars claims that it has assets of only, uh, up to $50,000 and liabilities up to 10 million. Um, Dr. Mack, you were, you called it. Um, and we were headed to this conversation because there was so much leverage given to Alex Jones across media platforms, across Facebook, across social media. And he really did make his hay off of, uh, the defamation and the just the one of the most tragic things in this country's history, Sandy Hook, he used that as a stepping stone to build his empire. And now he's having to file for bankruptcy. And, and man, look, and I don't watch I haven't watched very much news these days. I, I am so locked into the into this research. I, I, I just so for you to, to bring this situation up it is amazing. Serendipitous. All right? It's perfect timing. Amazing. But again, these are people who believe that they can do anything and say anything and not be held accountable. And I'm going to tell you again, the outlandishness, the foolishness of this is is what negative 45 bought to bear here. I mean, you got to go right. back. When videotapes surfaced of negative 45 telling you that he grabbed a woman in her private parts and all of these, I mean, just all the vile stuff that came out of this guy's background. And mm-hmm. he still got elected president at that point. Every undercover Klansman knew, and mm-hmm. I know I have to, to, to wear my sheet. Every vile Karen, whoever thought that I know how to get at black men. Every Republican who every white person who ever believed or black person for that matter as well, because we've seen some of them, them, uh, coons. <laughs> but every one of them realized, you know, as a coon, I can put the taps on the bottom of my shoes and I can go ahead and dance, dance this jig for massa now. I can do this right here in the open. Room. I don't have to be undercover no more. That's Maybe right. 45 showed them how to do all of this. That's and right. to your point, Ben, Sandy Hook was an absolute tragedy in this country. Parents lost babies. That's right. Parents lost babies. Just before Christmas, Dr. Mack. I mean, not that any time matters more than the others, but December 14th, I remember where I was when it happened. But please continue. That was a horrific day. So, Ben, look, the coach I was I was trying to remember uh, at Berkeley High School, his, his name is James Eady, E-A-D-I-E. And what's amazing is that Barksdale... When he was at UCLA, he couldn't he couldn't play. He couldn't play at Beverly Hill High. But he, he gets the first scholarship ever offered to a black and he plays there. Mm-hmm. He's eight months into the season when World War II, he is drafted and he has to go fight. Edie, on the other hand, got to sit his monkey butt up there at Berkeley High School while this black man is out fighting for his right, for his freedoms. Mm. When you do things to children, and so how many children did Edie break 
He didn't break Barksdale, but how many children did he break? So when you look at Sandy Hook, these are children, innocent children. children. And now you want to use your, you want to build a media empire on saying that Sandy Hooks was a hoax. Being, I want anybody who's listening who, who cannot understand the anger that parents right. have, the, the, the fury that they ought to be bringing to this guy as a defamation suit. You must try and imagine that your child gets gunned down in, in what ought to be a sacred place, school. Your child gets mm. murdered in a school. And now this guy is trying to build his media empire and making millions, arguably millions of dollars off of selling the, 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 the conspiracy. Mm, the that's right. That's at right. the cost of your child. No, 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 Ben. They should sue every part of him every and everybody associated with him. Because, Ben, I'll tell you this. Let's assume that he built this tremendous following. And I, as a company, wanted to advertise to his followers. And I'm listening to what he's saying. I'm listening to his rhetoric. I should be held liable, too, for defamation because I'm the one that's supporting him to be able to come on. Mm. <laughs> so every company that supported him, if I were the parents, I would bring them in because, again, being it, it, it's it's like Disney. When we were last I was on your show and, and we were talking about uh, Disney's um, muscle down in Florida and yeah. Disney yeah. is supporting the legislators who have bought forth this anti-gay bill. And then Disney, what you you want anybody, does any of us want to believe that Disney didn't know what was in hmm. the bill that was passed by these, these these lawmakers that they have financially supported? Yes, Disney, you knew. Mickey and Minnie, you knew. <laughs> they knew. <laughs> they knew. Dr. Mack, of course they know. Yes. They, they've got they've got operatives, they've got lobbyists, they have people who write legislation. Of course they knew. So so in the case of this guy Jones. Everybody that supported him, I hope that the parents extend their defamation lawsuit against all of them because they knew what they were supporting. And yes, the days of accountability need to be held when people are saying this type of outlandish nonsense. Absolutely. You know, the and I, I just, you know, again, this is what white privilege looked like, family. For those of you who don't know, think about this. Somehow Tucker Carlson, little Tucky, <laughs> can be on a major news right. network and That's somehow right. has some level of sympathy for Putin. Mm. Mm. That's my privilege. Yeah. Uh. That, that's you know, Dr. Mac, Dr. Mac, it is, it is drenched in, in, in white privilege in a country that is drenched in white supremacy with people who are drenched in cruelty because for, you know, I don't care how much money we can make off of certain things for Alex Jones to have made his empire, his fortune off of the bodies of those children. Um, he should lose everything. Um, and while I oppose homelessness in this country and I believe that we need to get every single homeless person um, off this street, I wouldn't mind if Alex Jones spent a couple of days um, there because that's the type of evil that this. I mean, and it's really, really it doesn't stop with Alex Jones. Like we're dealing with a cabal of people. We only have a couple of minutes here, Dr. Mack, and I know you got to get out of here because you're still grinding away. Um, but before we go to break, I just want to I just want to close our conversation this morning because we're dealing with a cabal of people who do not even care about our children, let alone their own children or flip it and reverse it. They don't care about their children, let alone our children. And yet these are the people with financial, economic and political power sitting at the top of Propaganda Mountain at Fox News. And if we're not careful, they'll be right back in the White House. They are already in. I mean, we are really surrounded by some sick people. Dr. Matt, get the last word. And uh, I know you got to get back to work. Be it, you know, th there's a there's one of our fame brothers who use the paraphrase to describe a situation just as this. Brother Malcolm, when he said what, Ben, <laughs> this is an example of the mm. chicken coming home to roost. See, America, you have sat on the side so long and allowed this kind of propaganda to work against so many minorities in this country. And let's let's first start with our Native American brothers and sisters. You let that morass take place. Mm. Then you used it with 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 us as a people. We didn't ask to come over here. 
you knew damn well what you was doing. America, you have a long, distorted history of doing this. And now you let 45 out of the bag and he takes it to a new level. Mm-hmm. And now all of you are doing it. You're gonna be made to, you're gonna be made to pay for it. But but example, when when America, when you're not worried about things, see, this is an example of the chickens coming home to roost. That's right. <laughs> That's y'all right. don't even know. Y'all, you don't even know how to stop this nonsense no more. So y'all have at it. Just absolutely. they don't know how to even stop this nonsense. Mm-hmm. They have let the genie out of the bag, Pandora out of the box, and it is out of control. And it's something that it's something that well-meaning white folks can't even control because the oh. well, the Neanderthals, ne- Margie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump, and his entire cabal, um, they've unleashed some fury in this country. Dr. Carl Mack, Black Heritage Days four is what we're reading from every morning. Five and six are on the way. And Dr. Mack, you're knee deep in it, neck deep in it right now. I'll let you get back to what you're doing. Thanks so much for hanging out with us this morning. No problem. No problem, my brother. We'll be back with more of the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show on the clock with Georgia Ford. It's coming up right after this break. 